Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite Sir Plants a lot, aka Josie. <laughs> So as you can see, today I am on the floor and that is because today we are making things. I have this slab of air dry clay that I bought literally months and months and months and months ago. I'm actually embarrassed how long I've had this for and not used it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought I would finally do something about this and I'm gonna try to make a plant pod. So in order for me not to just sit here in silence making my plant pod, I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me anything. So I've got some questions that I would like to answer and I'm also gonna give you a life update because there are gonna be some changes in my life happening soon and I just want to tell you what it's gonna mean for the channel, for videos, etc, etc. I'm not pregnant. Fuck that. No. No, no, no. At least not for another like 50 years. No. <laughs> okay, so I literally just turned the camera on but the SD card is running out of memory already so I'm gonna switch out the SD card and uh, we'll get right into it. Okay, I'm back. So I'm gonna be using this tutorial by this lovely lady. Um, I don't know, I just found this video randomly and I really like what she did. So she made like a speckled uh, plant pot using coffee grounds. So I'm gonna try to replicate that. The last air dry clay thing that I made was an attempt at a plant pot. I don't know if you've seen this one, but this is how it turned out. <laughs> I'm surprised I even have this, honestly, like, I really just have it to remind me of my failure because it looks nothing like a plant pot and you couldn't even use it as a plant pot because it's too shallow. So this was my first attempt, so I'm hoping that my second attempt is gonna be a lot more successful because this time I'm gonna be following a tutorial and hopefully I won't fuck it up, but hey, it's me, you never know. Okay, I took off my Crocs, so things are getting serious now. So yeah, I'll pull up my questions and uh, I'll just start making my clay pot, I guess. First question, are you being prosecuted for using the title sir when you clearly don't have the title? Um, excuse me, what makes you think I don't? <laughs> Emma from Good Growing asked, what is my number one wishlist plant? So I don't have only one, obviously, because that's impossible. But I do have some plans that are like towards the top of my favorites. So if we're talking wishlist affordable plans, then uh, I've been really looking forward to getting a philodendron Dean McDowell. That's like, I really want one of those because I think, you know, if you saw my uh, plant wishlist video, then I mentioned that I really want a Dean McDowell because they just look like clouds. They are so beautiful. And uh, yeah, I don't really have enough space here and uh, I just, I don't know, I didn't think that it would be a good idea for me to get one at the moment. So that's one affordable-ish plant. I mean, obviously it's not, you know, like 20 pounds or anything. It is a little bit more expensive, but that's just the world we live in, unfortunately. <laughs> wow, this is getting really gross already. I'm gonna make such a mess, you guys. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> okay, so that's one of my affordable plants. Um, and if we're talking an affordable wishlist plant, then I would absolutely love to own the Hoya Argentia Princess because, oh my God. I'm gonna try to insert some pictures here because I think this plant is absolutely beautiful. I watched a video by uh, Basie Plants. Um, I don't know what his name is actually. Is his name Basie? I don't know. He's like a quite a popular Hoya guy on YouTube and um, he was talking about like Hoyas that are not worth the price and he was shaming the Hoya Argentia princess so much, <laughs> which like, you know, fair enough, you're, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I just thought it was funny because that's how I found out about that plant. And the first thing I thought was, this is literally the most gorgeous plant ever and I need it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the number one wishlist plant. They currently retail for like upwards of 1000 pounds. So not exactly affordable, you could say. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> So yeah, upwards of 1,000 pounds, which is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And uh, uh, it feels so gross. 
<laughs> I can't do this. Anyway, yeah. Bottom line is that plant is like super unaffordable at the moment and I haven't seen it being sold anywhere. Like even, even if I did have the money to buy it, I probably wouldn't if I could find it uh, just because... I mean, technically I do have the money to buy it, but like, you know, 1,000 pounds, like, that's someone's rent. That's a little bit crazy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, I think not for me, at the moment, at least. I don't know what this is gonna be, by the way. I'm just trying, you know, I'm trying my best. That's all I can say for myself, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm gonna try to roll it out with my rolling pin. Oh shit, I forgot about the coffee. Okay, um, okay, let's do that now, I guess. So, funny story, uh, I have a coffee machine, but it's an espresso, and I don't actually have, like, ground coffee, so I'm gonna use coffee from coffee pots. <laughs> because I bought these, um, and these don't fit my espresso machine, I didn't realize at the store, and I opened it, um, and that's how I found out, so I couldn't even return them. So I'm just gonna casually take out the coffee out of the coffee pots <laughs> and, you know, do it that way. Sometimes you just gotta improvise in life, what can I say? <laughs> oh, it smells nice. Oh, this is gonna be a very good smelling pot. I am excited. <laughs> Another question that I got was from Emma as well. And she asked me, what is my number one favorite Hoya? Um, again, I don't think this is much of a secret because I've been drooling over this one specific Hoya so much. And it is my Hoya Mithild Silver. It's definitely one of my most expensive plants. And I mean, you know, it's beautiful. So I just, it's worth the price, but it is just, yeah, it's just with everything, like the way it grows, the way it looks, it's just all around like the best plant ever and uh, definitely my number one favorite Hoya. I'm running out of breath, you guys. <laughs> this is a lot of work. Oh my God. Ugh. So yeah, that's my number one favorite Hoya. Um, I don't know how much more coffee I need to add here. It's still very non-coffee-ish. Love that. The next question was, uh, what is my, uh, what was my first plant? So I get this question like every time <laughs> I ask you guys to uh, send me questions. So I've already mentioned it, but I'm gonna mention it again because someone asked this question, so they're expecting an answer. So, <laughs> GG, because you asked this question. <laughs> My first ever plant was, if we're talking like conscious houseplant buying decision, then it was my Monstera Deliciosa and my Stromanthi Trio Star. Those are the two oldest plants in my collection. I've had those for, what year is it now? 2022, so like two years. Um, I haven't been into houseplants for that long, but you know, special interests and all, and <laughs> I spend a lot of time researching houseplants, okay? <laughs> so yeah, those were my two uh, first plants. Um, honestly, like, I feel like most people that get their first ever plant get the Monstera Deliciosa as one of their first plants, because, I mean, I'm not surprised. It's a beautiful plant, you know? Um, but I don't know what I was gonna say. My mind went somewhere else and I just can't find my way back. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, that's all the plenty related questions that I got. I only got like six questions, you guys, okay? Like, I don't understand how you don't wanna ask me more questions because I'm such an interesting person, like, you're missing out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Am I? No, not really. <laughs> oh, actually, one more plant-related question that I got. Uh, this one was submitted to my YouTube community tab. Uh, I don't remember your name, I'm sorry, but 
it was uh, about how I store my plants and like my plant accessories and stuff. Which I think is a really interesting question because nobody ever asks me that. But uh, I think it's a real problem that like we don't really address in the plant community because I literally have an entire cupboard just dedicated to plants and plant related things. And that's not even like I have half of my pots I have in the garage and the other half I have in that cupboard. And the only reason those other pods are in the garage is because I just don't have any more space in the cupboard. <laughs> I don't even make my own soil, that's the worst part. Because when you do, obviously, you know, you need a lot of space to uh, store all of your bags of uh, soil components and stuff. But I order bags of pre-mixed soil from Soil Ninja. And even then, like, I am running out of space. <laughs> Some of the questions were, uh, that I got were, why are you leaving us? And that is because I am moving countries again, super exciting. <laughs> I'm moving back to Prague, which is where I was born in about a month, July 22nd on my birthday. So that's gonna be an interestingly spent birthday. But yeah, I'm moving back home because um, I came to the UK to study and I graduated this year. And I, again, if you've been following me on Instagram and stuff, then you would know that I applied to Oxford, but didn't get in, which like your last Oxford. I am extremely intelligent, if you can tell. <laughs> and yeah, that was kind of like, whenever I have something planned and it doesn't work out, I just go into complete paralysis because, you know, neurodivergent brains where my neurodivergence at. <laughs> but yeah, that was, I kind of planned my entire life around going to Oxford next year and then that didn't happen. So it's just like, you know what? I'm just gonna give up on life. <laughs> No, not entirely, but I really wanted to do this course. It was clinical neuroscience, which is like my favorite area of neuroscience. <laughs> um, and there's only one other school in the UK that offers that program. That, um, by that program, I mean clinical neuroscience. Obviously there's plenty of like actual normal neuroscience courses, but um, I'm particularly interested in the clinical part because I don't really care about animal neuroscience and the other course that offers clinical neuroscience is at King's College London which is in London obviously and I just I just hate London I'm sorry if you live there like good for you but I never could because that place is so stressful to me like I'm always scared that someone's gonna like pickpocket my phone the last time I went to London someone had their actual suitcase stolen like from the train station and like if you know anything about UK train stations then in most of them especially the big ones and this was a big one you can't get in unless you have a ticket but this happened on the platform like someone was on the platform waiting for the train and they had their fucking suitcase stolen from right in front of them so somebody actually bought a ticket to get onto the platforms just to seal someone's baggage which like get a life you know I don't know it just feels like a dangerous place to be honest and like I'm, I'm pretty sure a bunch of you are laughing at me right now if you live in like New York or something but <laughs> I just do not feel safe when I'm there and as someone that suffers from extreme anxiety I do need to feel safe uh, at least physically because otherwise my brain would just implode okay I think we might have enough coffee that literally took like 20 minutes <laughs> So yeah, anyway, the point of that tangent is that in order to study clinical neuroscience, I would have to live in London, which is just out of the question for me, especially now with the cost of living crisis, like everything is super expensive and like everything's three times as expensive as anywhere else in London. Like I could probably do it, but I have a cat that I look after and you know, I want my child to have a good life and to have a garden that she can like go out to and you know just hang out outside so i could live in like a shared accommodation oops <laughs> it is very likely that i would be paying like 1000 pounds just for a room just for a tiny teeny tiny 
double bedroom, you know? That's how crazy it is. And, you know, first of all, I would have to live with other people, which like, I am so done with that. <laughs> And second of all, you know, I just, I don't think it would be good for me living in London because like I said, I just don't feel very safe there. So the point is, I have decided that if I'm not gonna study uh, further in the UK, I might as well just move back home and um, save money because me and my brother share a house that we inherited from our mom and obviously you know when you own a house you don't have to pay rent so that would be like a major cost taken care of not that money is an issue you know luckily i have a very rich grandma thanks grandma <laughs> but it just feels so wasteful to be paying 1000 pounds a month for rent in a different country when you can just not and live in a nice country when it doesn't rain like 90% of the time. I'm gonna be talking a lot of shit about the UK in the next five minutes, so please try not to take it personally. It's just an experience of someone that has, you know, lived in other places. And if you have also, then yeah, I don't know, just be nice, okay? <laughs> okay, this is not good because this needs to be a lot longer. I'm gonna add a lot more clay to this. Yeah, so anyway, um, that's why I'm moving back home. I did apply for a neuroscience course actually at King's, but it's an online neuroscience course, which I figured would be perfect for me since I wanna move back home. I haven't actually heard back from them yet, but I'm pretty confident I'll get in. I mean, look at me, you know, <laughs> how could you not? <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping that I'll get into that and then I'll just, unfortunately it's a part-time course. Well, I don't know if that's unfortunately. I would rather get it over and done with within just one year, ideally, but there wasn't any options to um, do it full-time, unfortunately. So I'm gonna be doing a part-time master's course and on the side, I'm probably gonna find some sort of a part-time job, even though I really, really do not want to. <laughs> if you know anything about me, I hate the corporate life. I hate the hustle. Like, I want the opposite of a hustle. I just wanna live in the countryside and watch the sun set while my chickens eat their little chicken food. I don't know what chickens eat. Grass? No, they don't eat grass. Anyway, I just hate working because it's just so much work. <laughs> I mean, it's not even that, but I just find it so extremely unfulfilling. And again, if you're one of my neurodivergent friends, then you know how difficult it is to do something that you don't find enjoyable, that you don't find interesting. And it just, you know, it was just kind of soul crushing for me when I was working, to be honest. And I don't want to do that again. So yeah, I would like to find a part-time job, ideally in person, because I only ever worked online and it's not really for me, to be honest. Like, especially if I'm gonna live on my own or with my brother, we don't really talk to each other. <laughs> um, but yeah, especially if I'm gonna live by myself, then I just need like day-to-day -day random interaction to kind of make me feel like I'm real because otherwise I kind of forget. <laughs> it would be even more ideal if the office was dog friendly because I've been really thinking about getting a dog. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was thinking it would just be nice to like have some sort of a structure. Again, just neurodivergent things, but like if I don't have structure, I literally do not do anything and it's really become a pro well not a problem but i've you know going to university for three years i really saw the detrimental effects of not having any structure because going to university i don't know how it is in other places but here in the uk you go through periods of extreme stress and you know so much work at one point so many deadlines and like uh, within like one or two weeks and then you don't do anything for like three four weeks on end because the holidays are so long which like i'm not complaining about the holidays being long but like having to go through the jumps of like extreme intense work and then 
no work at all. I just cannot thrive in that environment, unfortunately. So yeah, just something to give me a little bit more stability. Like, I don't think I'm mentally ready to have a normal job like five times a week, but part-time I could handle it, I think. Just something to kind of ground me in the world and yeah, allow me to kind of, I don't know, put my degree to use, I guess, because my only other revenue stream currently is YouTube and, you know, that's not really paying the bills. <laughs> so I need something that is actually gonna make me money and something that's gonna make me feel like I'm using my brain a little bit more. I think I need more clay. This is no bueno. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, let's add a little bit more. So yeah, that's the plan for the next couple of months, I guess. Which, you know, currently I'm posting three times a week and I'm uh, three times a week. No, I do not post three times a week. Oh, you wish. <laughs> I currently post two times a week, um, which I'm only really able to do because I literally do nothing at all. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I might um, have to resort back to posting just once a week if I do have an actual employment, which how crazy would that be? So yeah, get ready for that. Another thing that's related to that is obviously I have to get rid of most of my plants because thanks to the UK being out of the EU now, you can't really take plants over the borders legally without a phytosanitary. And I just, I don't know, the getting a phytosanitary sounds like such a hassle. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I don't want to have to worry about it. So I'm just going to sell my plants and then we're going to start all over again <laughs> when I move to Prague. I kind of like it because I was talking to one of my friends about this. Hi, Ange, if you're watching. Um, but it's kind of nice to get like this reset because you get rid of all of your plants and then you can buy plants again, but you only really get ones that you actually like. Because I feel like with a lot of us, we have plants that we don't really like, but we feel too bad about getting rid of them. So yeah, moving abroad kind of, you know, gives you an excuse to get rid of all of the plants that you don't like. <laughs> and then purchase only the ones that you actually do enjoy keeping. But what that means for the channel is that uh, there's gonna be a couple of plant hauls within the next couple of months. So I hope you're excited for that. I'm also planning to get an IKEA greenhouse cabinet, which I'm also super excited about because obviously I don't have one here and um, Hopefully I won't be moving for the next like a lot of years <laughs> uh, Because I'm not planning to you know, I'm just gonna I'm just planning to live in my family home For as long as I can to be honest because it is a nice house like you know, and it's home for me So yeah, there's gonna be some IKEA greenhouse cabinet videos. I've been doing a lot of research on uh, what to do, what not to do. So hopefully I can kind of make it as good as possible on the first try without having to make any amendments. And I think my Hoyas are gonna love it. That's the main reason I want a greenhouse cabinet because a lot of my Hoyas live in the boxes behind me um, because they need the higher humidity. So I think it would be really good for them. And again, Basie Plants, he's got a Hoya cabinet and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I wanna get something similar to that. If you're still watching, hi. <laughs> I've literally been talking to myself for 30 minutes. If you are still here, then you're the real MVP. <laughs> but since I'm gonna have an outdoor garden, I would really like to make some outdoor gardening stuff as well. I'm sure a lot of you won't be excited about that, but I don't care because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> there isn't that much content online, like good quality content. The only person that I can think of that produces like good quality outdoor gardening content is Becca Della Plains. So that's kind of what I'm like aiming for. I just, Becca is my role model. <laughs> No, I mean, this is, it's just kind of, you know, I would like to 
share some knowledge on outdoor gardening and make high quality videos about it. That's really what I, what I was thinking about. Let me know if you do outdoor gardening. I feel like a lot of us, if you have a backyard or something, then a lot of us already do outdoor gardening anyway, because it's kind of like, you know, it's the natural path to take, isn't it? <laughs> First you start with houseplants and then you move on to outdoor gardening and like growing your vegetables and stuff. And you know, I think it's gonna be fun because I know absolutely nothing about outdoor gardening, like literally nothing whatsoever. So it's gonna be very interesting to try to figure all of that out. And you know, hopefully I can give people such as myself some advice on outdoor gardening along the way, hopefully. We'll see about that. Ah, okay, my slab of clay is finally big enough for me to make the first cut. So let's finally do that. So my camera overheated. <laughs> so it cut off recording for a while, but literally all I did was I just cut out the slab that's gonna make the walls of the pot. And now I'm gonna make the base. I forgot what I was saying last time, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically the bottom line is I am moving back home and I'm quite excited about it to be honest because I just don't like living in this country. I just, I don't know, if you live in the UK as a um, immigrant then maybe you can relate to this, but I just feel like the government and the greed that is all around, it's just not really an environment that I want to be in because the number one religion in the UK is capitalism. Like everyone is just riding high on capitalism, okay? <laughs> and I feel like everywhere I go, anything I do, people are just trying to like, I don't know, take advantage of you so that you would pay for something that you don't need. And I just, you know, I've just had enough at this point. Like, I don't wanna give you my money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and since I'm too polite to say so a lot of the times, I figured I would just remove myself from the situation completely to solve that problem. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, the Czech Republic is a little bit more, there is a little bit more work-life balance and people don't think that their job is like their sole purpose in life. Because I'm sorry, but if you think that your only purpose in life is to have a job and have a career and make a lot of money, then I feel bad for you, honestly. Because that's exactly what capitalism wants you to think, okay? <laughs> You're welcome for this unsolicited lecture. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the things that bothers me and one of the reasons I actually do want to move back home is because my brother has kids. He's got uh, one of them, a girl that's like two years old now and he's gonna have another kid soon and I just want to be around them, you know, like I'm not planning to get kids of my own anytime soon, if ever. So I just kind of, I don't know. I like hanging out with kids, even though I didn't think that it would be something that I would enjoy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I only like these kids because they're like my blood relatives. And I kind of feel like I need to be around to shield them from family generational trauma that has been just carried on for decades. <laughs> and you know, I want my niece and nephew to be around someone that um, is gonna try to break that cycle because, I mean, you know, God bless my brother. I know he's trying, but we've, we've all, all of us in the family have had some fucked up experiences in life and, you know, it's just sometimes you can't get rid of it 100%. And I consider myself to be a very progressive person, so, I just wanna be around these kids and tell them, you know what, if you're a boy and you wanna wear a dress, then go ahead because you do whatever the hell you want. I'm never gonna stop you in expressing yourself and being who you wanna be because that's exactly the kind of shit that, you know, just causes so much trauma in so many families. Just like not accepting children for who they are and wanting them to be something different. I just, I don't know, like, if I had a child of my own, I would only want like the best of the best for them. I wouldn't want them to have a nice safe space because that's just like the bare minimum that a child needs. 
and I think a lot of families, including my own, to be honest, are failing at that or have failed at that. And, you know, ever since my mom passed away, I've kind of realized that, like, because she was, like, the family member that I was closest to, um, even though we did have a very rocky relationship, let me tell you. But, you know, even then, like, she was the person that I actually considered to be my family because she was the only one that like cared about my studies and cared about you know my day-to-day -day, my plans what I was doing outside of school that kind of stuff but you know now that she's gone I obviously don't have anyone like that and um, I think at least like by being there for other people I can kind of make sure that other people don't have the same experience that I do because, you know, it sucks when you don't really have anyone that looks after you because, yeah, I have friends, you know, but a friendly relationship is not the same as a parent-child relationship. Like, no matter what you say, it's just, it's just not the same and you're not gonna get the devotion and, you know, unconditional love from a friend that you are gonna get from a parent. Like, that's just... At least I haven't experienced it yet. Like, if you want to change my mind, go ahead and try. <laughs> but so far, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I just want to kind of create a family in that way, I suppose. I mean, like, most of my family members are doomed. <laughs> and I don't really want to... I don't know, I've kind of lost interest in trying with them, but you know, kids have a blank slate and they don't really, they don't have any expectations for you. That's what I like about kids so much because you could literally just play hide and seek with them and they're gonna think you're the most fun person ever. I feel like, you know, with children I don't have to live up to anybody's expectations and I can just literally be myself and play hide and seek. <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of why I want to be around and obviously living abroad I've not been able to be in my niece's life as much as I would have wanted to and I am so excited to see her again because I freaking love that child like <laughs> She's a little beast, but I do love her This looks awful. This literally looks so bad yeah, and you know, another thing related to that is that um, since my mom passed away, like, there's no one there in Prague to look after my grandma now because my mom was kind of like the primary person that would look after my grandma. And she's like in her 80s now, so you know, she's gonna require more care um, than ever from now on. And, um, since my brother isn't really much to rely on <laughs> in that department then I feel like the responsibility kind of automatically falls on me and yeah I just want to be around and it's so difficult to like you know look after someone and help someone when you live in a different country especially someone like my grandma that doesn't use like any sort of technology I mean she tries god bless her but She's not very successful a lot of the time, so <laughs> I feel like it would just make me feel a little bit better if I was just around in the same city to be able to help her whenever she needed me to because it sucks being old, so I'm, I'm gonna try to make it as enjoyable as possible, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna go get some water. Stay tuned. So yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not expecting to move back home in my life to like suddenly make a 180 turn and, you know, all of a sudden my depression is gonna disappear and stuff like, um, you know, I've had enough experience <laughs> to know that that's not gonna happen, but I just feel like I'm gonna feel a bit more content living in my own space and being around family and just having some sort of a support network you know like i said most of my family sucks which nothing you can do about that but <laughs> at least like this is a terrible example but if something were to happen to me and i was to be hospitalized here in the uk like i wouldn't have anyone that would be able to come visit me and bring me my stuff you know what i mean because i don't have any family in the country and i don't know it's 
kind of comforting to know that living back home, I'm kind of gonna have that again when it comes to it. I know this is like such a strange thing to worry about when like I don't even have like, you know, any serious health issues that would make me end up in the hospital or anything. But this is the sort of stuff I think about, <laughs> okay? It's just gonna make me feel a lot more at ease knowing that, you know, if things go wrong, then my cat is gonna be looked after and stuff. Um, because like I said, you know, if that were to happen to me here, I would be screwed. Like, no question about it whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, it's better than the last one I made, but I don't know. Like the girl in the tutorial, how did you make yours so nice? <laughs> I'm jealous. Speaking of which, um, I am not in contact with literally anyone that I went to school or high school with anymore. So if you live in the Czech Republic and you want to be my friend, then hit me up. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I don't really talk to anyone that I used to know anymore um, because it's been four years. And especially when you're as young as me, I'm in my early 20s, people go through major changes. And I've also realized that, you know, a lot of the people that I was friends with when I lived there, I didn't actually like. <laughs> Which, you know, those are important things to realize because I don't want to waste my time spending time with people I don't like, you know what I mean? Because, like, you know, the pandemic was horrible and everything. Like, I'm not denying that whatsoever. It was awful. But one positive thing that came out of it was that I realized that nothing's gonna happen if I'm alone. Because that was like a fear that drove me for most of my life. I was so scared of being alone and not having any friends that I literally let people treat me like shit. And I just don't wanna be that person anymore, you know? Like, I just had people around me, alleged friends that didn't treat me nice at all and I deserve so much better than that and you do too if you find yourself in similar relationships because there's nothing worse than having friends quote-unquote that make you feel bad about yourself because like those people are not your friends those are people that just have you around to make themselves feel better like no fuck those if we used to be friends and you used to do that to me fuck you too <laughs> Not that anybody would be watching this, but you never know, you never know. Anyway, I've been talking for literal hours, it feels like, and I don't think I can improve this anymore, unfortunately. It is what it is. <laughs> Let me show you a nice close-up. So, you know, it's a little bit wobbly, but hey, handmade. This is quality a factory would not be able to produce this masterpiece. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna let this dry. If you want to see how it turns out when it's dry and painted and everything, then make sure you follow me on Instagram because I'm gonna share the results on there. Um, I hope you enjoyed my 50 minute long rant. I sure did. <laughs> Feels nice to have a good conversation with someone from time to time, you know what I mean? <laughs> If you want to be involved in future Q&A videos, then make sure you give me a follow on Instagram because um, that's where I ask you to ask me questions. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're still here watching, then you gotta like, I don't know, put an alien emoji down in the comments or something so that I can personally thank you because wow, you, you have some attention span. Let me tell you that. Cannot relate, but good for you. Okay, that's it for this video, you guys. Um, like I said, hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. <laughs> I'll see you here for my next one. Bye!